Hello, this is Tammy, Plays Well with Paper, for the Whimsy Stamps Halloweeners Design Team. Today, I'm sharing with you a birthday card that I made in September for Whimsy Stamps creative director and designer, Deb Davis. I wanted to make a card with one of her stamp sets, and of course, needed to be a Halloween theme since she loves the Halloween season. I looked through all of the stamp sets that I have that were designed by Deb and my eyes fell on this one, Attempted Murder Clear Stamp Set. I hadn't used it yet, but I was looking at it and I kind of was drawn to the picket fence at the bottom. And I thought, you know, I think each one of those pickets could become a birthday candle. Then I searched through and I found this little leaf that I thought would be a perfect flame for each of the candles to stamp at the top. And with the pumpkins and the ravens, I thought this was the set that I needed to use to make Deb's birthday card. I began by stamping some of the pumpkins onto a piece of masking paper that I have. I got it from Judikins. And then I cut those pumpkin masks out and I started to stamp the pumpkins onto the bottom of an A2 piece of Distress Mixed Media Heavy Stock. You can see that this paper is slightly yellow in color, and that's fine because I'm going to be, the colors that I'm going to be using, they will add to the distressed feel. Now you can see that I am stamping and masking three pumpkins that I want to be in front of the picket fence. I'm stamping in Distress Archival ink and the colors I'm using, I'm kind of mixing them as I stamp. I'm using Black Soot and Ground Espresso Distress Archival ink. So now I have all three pumpkins masked off and I'm stamping that picket fence. I haven't trimmed it down so that it will fit on an A2 card base. So I'm just stamping some pickets on both sides so that I have options when the time comes and I, I begin trimming it. I stamped a couple of the branches in the top area and now I'm going to start figuring out where I want my ravens to be. That took me a little bit longer than I thought it would but once I finished placing them I stamped them in black soot archival ink and I was ready to start masking again. I'm starting to color in the background here and the grass area at the bottom is peeled paint distress ink. And you can see that I have the, not only are the pumpkins still masked off, but over the pumpkins, I have the mask for the picket fence. And that took quite a while because I had to use my craft knife to go in and cut out the slats in between each picket. And so that did take some time. I also masked off the branches that the ravens are sitting on. And now I started to go ahead and color in the background up at the top. I started with milled lavender distress ink and then went in with a little bit darker purple with the dusty conquered and then an even darker purple with the villainous potion. You can see I am not attempting at all to make this a smooth blend. This is a Halloween card and for me I feel like uh, you know, the, the rougher and more irregular things are on Halloween cards, the better to me. So I don't really work that much at getting it smooth. And then I went back in after the dark one. I added a little bit more milled lavender in there in the center. And then I sprayed it with some water and dried it. So that's it. It is not smooth and perfect. Now I started to peel off those masks. And as you can see, it took me a couple of different pieces to get the picket fence completely covered, but the masks all worked. And before I began coloring in each of the parts, I used the Harvest Moon Mica Distress Crayon, and I drew in some flames above each of the pickets. And then while the crayon was still, it's not really wet, but it hasn't completely dried, so you can move it around with your fingers a little bit and smudge it. So I'm smudging each of the flames, and I'm not going to leave them like that, but I wanted a base in kind of a flame shape in the, the mica yellow before I stamped the other flame. 
Then I started coloring everything in with Distress Ink, and this is how I do it. I smoosh the ink from my Distress Ink pad onto my work surface, and then I'll pick it up with my water brush and usually brush in the entire area that I want colored. And I'm not too worried about details at this point. I'm just trying to get a layer of color down. And then I will continue to add layers once it's dry. Always dry in between layers. And then I'll add some other colors for just texture, shadows, all of that, you know, different details. Getting back to the flames on the pickets, I decided to get jack-o'-lantern mica stain and stamp it with the leaf stamp onto that little bit of smudge that I made with the Distress Mica Crayon. And so I put some drops of the jack o Mica Stain onto my work surface, and you can see I just put the stamp in there and then I kind of tap a lot of it off. And then you press it down on the area that you want to stamp. And you can see it's a really tiny little stamp. Now you don't want to judge it while it's wet. It's not going to be shimmery yet, so that's why I'm drying it. You can actually see it changing as I dry from that deep dark orange into a lighter orange. And now you can see all the shimmery goodness from the mica crayon and also the mica stains. So I just continued in that manner, just kind of tapping the stamp into the distressed mica stain until I got all of those little flames stamped out and dried. Now I realized that this is a birthday card and that's why I have a birthday candle picket fence. So I definitely needed to have some sort of sentiment to wish Deb a happy birthday. And I looked through some of her other designs and found this one that had happy Halloween and happy belated birthday or happy birthday. Perfect. So I stamped it on another piece of Distress Mixed Media Heavy Stock. I colored it in with Spiced Marmalade Distress Ink. And then I trimmed it down to size so that I could fit it on the top of the birthday card. While I had my trimmer out, I decided I probably should trim down my card front so that it could fit on my card base with a little bit of a black reveal. So I did that, cut a little piece off of the side and off of the bottom. And there we go, my sentiment fit. So I do trim down just a little bit to make sure that it didn't run into the branch on the other side. Then I edged around each piece with brown distress ink. I usually use walnut stain, but you use whatever works for you. If you even like to do this, I know some people don't even like to edge in the, the darker brown, so that's up to you. And here's the finished piece. I did sew around it with my sewing machine and on my YouTube channel, I do have a little tutorial showing how to sew on paper. So if you're not sure how to do that, you can head over to Plays Well With Paper YouTube channel and you can see that part of this tutorial there. But I think it turned out great. And right now in the other tutorial, I'm talking to you about all the little details, but the most important thing is that you are looking at in the top that the branches are not perfectly colored. And so I just want to leave you with the thought that even though this is a birthday card that I was making for someone else, I didn't let imperfection stop me from making. And I want to encourage you not to let imperfection stop you from making or giving to someone. They're not expecting perfection and you shouldn't be, so don't let it rob you of your joy of making. Just get in there and make and enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you were inspired or learned something, we would appreciate if you clicked the like button and even left us a little comment below. And please be sure to subscribe to the Whimsy Stamps YouTube channel. And also make sure that you're following their other social media platforms for all of the new releases and the amazing inspiration that goes along with them.